Good morning, boys and girls. It's a beautiful, sunny morning in the forest. Um, chapter five is entitled Leaving Gray House. Um, remember, the mice are getting ready to move their home, but they have to get permission from the boss. So we'll see how that goes. You all remember who the boss is. For the next two days, Lungwort worked on the speech he intended to make to Mr. Okax. He did this in his study. An old boot that Farmer Lamore had left behind on the front hall steps. After lining the boot with the potato sacking, Lungwort had chewed out a couple of windows then used a plaid necktie to curtain the entryway. Now and again he emerged, papers in hand, seeking out older members of the family. He'd corner them and say, I need you to listen to this. After reading a paragraph or two, he insisted upon knowing what the listener thought. If there were any complaints, he'd say something like, no, I don't want flattery. I can't use that. I need hard criticism. When he received criticism, he always argued that his way was the best. Then off he'd go, in a grump, to make minute subtractions or additions to his text, none of which had anything to do with either compliments or criticisms. While Lungwort prepared his speech, a committee busied itself making a white flag. No one knew whether a flag of this kind was Lungwort's idea or Mr. Ocox's demand. Even so, whenever there was such a permission party, as the younger mice called it, a crisp new flag was carried, so Mr. Ocox would have no doubt as to the mice's intentions. It would be Poppy's job to march along with her father bearing the flag. Poppy, meanwhile, did what she'd been told to do, relating the facts of Ragweed's death to all the family. Everyone was upset by the story. Being eaten by Mr. Ocax was a shared nightmare. Moreover, it happened with some regularity. They were all scared of him. There was considerable tuttering and much whisker twitching. Yet, while everyone expressed sorrow, Poppy suspected that few grieved. Worse were the words of comfort that begun, well, if someone had to be sacrificed. I don't understand why they disliked ragweed so, Poppy protested sadly to Basil the night before she and Lungwort were to go see Mr. Ocax. What harm did ragweed do them? I can think of Three things, Basil replied. He was a golden mouse, not a deer mouse. He came from somewhere else, and he said things that upset them. You know, like, you haven't lived unless you die for something. Remember what he told old Plum? A soft belly causes softness on both ends. But I liked that he was different, Poppy confessed. He loved adventure. I'll never forget the last words he ever spoke to me. They were so terribly ironic. What's ironic? You know, when the words mean almost the opposite of what you're saying. The last thing he said to me was, you don't know how to live like I do. What's ironic about that, Basil asked. The next second, Mr. Ocax killed him. Oh, Basil shuddered. 
Now Poppy, her mother began as she brushed her daughter's fur for a final time. Above all, do exactly what your father tells you to do. Be respectful towards Mr. Okax if he takes notice of you. But if he does not, don't fret. Your father commands his attention. Mr. Okax has great respect for your father. Don't so much as speak until you are spoken to. Then be humble and brief. Remember the old saying, my should be nice. And for heaven's sakes, keep the white flag flying. Above all, sweet Cecilie concluded, remember, it's an honor that you were selected to go. Yes, mother, Poppy replied, though what her mother was saying made her very uncomfortable. Lungwort appeared at that moment. His hair was slicked down. His whiskers were crisply curled. His tail had been scrubbed to a glowing pink. His thimble hat was set at a knotty angle. Is she ready? He asked his wife. I think so. Lungwort examined his daughter with a critical eye. Fine, he said. A good start promises a good finish. All right, mother. We should be off. Excuse me, boys and girls. That is my ferocious dog who just saw a squirrel come out of the forest and she didn't want that squirrel getting close to her house. So, Maggie, you have to sit and be quiet while we're reading. Okay, mother, should we be off? Sweet Cecilie gave Lungward a nuzzle, whispering, do be careful. Careful is my middle name, Lungward assured her and led the way to the porch. There, the whole family of mice had assembled for a send-off. Fireflies had been gathered now and released giving the moment a festive mood. Poppy, holding the flag, stood at the foot of the porch steps. Lungwort scampered atop the old porch rail and faced the crowd. My fellow mice, he begun, paws clasped comfortably over his plump belly while he surveyed his family with solemn regard. I am about to leave for my meeting with Mr. Okax. Need I remind you how important is this meeting? A moment for the multitude of mice to memorize. Poppy, unable to make much sense of the words, stopped listening. She was searching for Basil in the crowd. Be certain, Lungwort continued, that I will go forward with your best interest at heart. I have prepared a fine speech that will, I'm sure, convince him of our needs. He held up a scroll of paper wrapped carefully in leaves to protect it. I look forward to returning with Mr. Okak's kind permission so at least half of us can move on to a new home. That will be a great day for us all. At this point, he looked down at Poppy. Poppy, he cried, raise up the flag. What? The flag, Poppy, the flag. Oh, Poppy lifted the white banner high. Looking at it, all she could think of was a flag of surrender. Okay, this time it's a chipmunk that has the dog all riled up. Maggie, Maggie, can you hear the squirrel? Maggie hears it and she's not happy. Oh, Poppy lifted the white banner high. Looking at it, all she could think of was a flag of surrender. 
As Lovemore took his place before her, one of the crown called out, Hip, hip, hooray, cried the others. Hip, hip, hooray, forward, Lungwort cried. He gave a smart nod to Poppy and then began to march off. The crowd continued to cheer. Poppy had to admit it was grand. When she caught sight of Basil waving frantically to catch her eye, she even felt proud. Within moments, however, everything changed. Gray House, with its cheerful lights and well-wishers, vanished behind them. The moon had all but disappeared behind clouds that promised rain. No stars were visible. The air felt as heavy as wet wool. In the darkness, Poppy had no idea of which direction they were to go. We'll be taking the tar road, Lugwort informed her. Fewer obstructions, more visibility. Do we have a meeting place, she asked. The very tip of Dimwood Forest, her father said just on the far side of the bridge over Glitter Creek, Mr. Okak's watching tree. He's there most nights, can't miss it. It's a huge dead oak. How come it's dead? It was hit by lightning. Was Mr. Okak's on the tree at the time? Lungwort chuckled. Poppy, those are those who say Mr. Okax made the lightning himself. He's that kind of bird. Now, my dear, do keep that flag up. Poppy tried, but she was wondering what kind of chance they'd have with an owl who made his own lightning. Marching down the middle of the road made her nervous. Surely Mr. Okax would see them. Would he recognize her? If he did, would he attack? What should she do then? Run? Where? Ashamed to have such worries, Poppy decided it would be better to hide them. So she said nothing. Still, it was very hard to keep the heavy flag high. Up, Lungwort kept calling. He was now walking behind her. They had been marching for some time during which they had exchanged only a few words. When the night suddenly, silence was suddenly shattered by a hoo-hoo, hoo-hoo, startled Poppy stopped short. In the confusion, Lungwort banged into her. He lost his thimble cap and his speech She dropped the flag. Pick the flag up, her father cried, searching and finding both thimble and speech in the darkness. Lose the flag and we're done for. Do you think he's seen us? Why else do you think he called, Longwort snapped. The hair along Poppy's spine stood straight up. It wasn't the owl's call that frightened her as much as the fear she heard suddenly in her father's voice. Never had she heard that before. She peered around at him. He didn't appear scared. Poppy sighed. She decided she must have imagined it, seen him in him what she was feeling. Then the call came again. Hoo-hoo! Hoo-hoo! Poppy her heart pounding, ask, How much further do we go? Quite a ways, Lungwort whispered. Oh my. They listened again. No more calls came. Lungwort adjusted his hat and gave a forced chuckle. Actually, I suspect that call was just some good-natured joshing. Papa, what? I'm glad you're here. Hmm, Lungwort replied, but Poppy sensed he was pleased. 
she felt better until he said, but do keep that flag up. The owl's call came again. For a second time, Poppy stopped. Her father did too. They listened intently for a few moments. Then Lungwort whispered, just as I thought, he's joking. Lighten up, child. They moved on. Poppy didn't like to contradict her father, but she doubted Mr. Okak's calls were a joke. She rather suspected the owl was trying to scare them. And as far as she was concerned, he was succeeding. Rain began. It came softly at first, but when a clap of thunder burst right overhead, making them jump, the drizzle turned into a dulge. Within seconds, they were soaked. The tar-covered road ran with water. The flag became heavier and spattered with mud. Shake out the flag, Lugwort cried. It must stay white. Poppy tried to do as she was told, but it was difficult. They trudged on. Off to the left, flashes of lightning allowed Poppy to see the tall trees of Dimwood Forest. Although she, like all the mice, was well aware of the forest, she had never visited it. Who would want to? She'd been taught too many fearsome things about its vast size. It's dreadful darkness, in fact, that Mr. Okax had a secret home there. Equally alarming was the knowledge that Dimwood Forest was full of animals that hunted mice. Animals like porcupines. Por Poppy made herself look in another direction. We're getting close, her father said, his voice tense. Poppy cocked an ear. Over the continual splash of rain, she heard the rushing waters of Glitter Creek. Then the tar road twisted sharply to the left. They had reached the bridge, a row of heavy wooden planks thrown across the creek. The gaps between the planks were wide enough for a mouse to fall through. Lungwort chose the middle plank and Poppy followed. Despite her best intentions, she couldn't keep from peeking down. Normally, Glitter Creek was serene. The summer rains had made it high, fast, and fairly roaring. Poppy stole a nervous glance at her father. He had stopped to pull at his whiskers. She had never seen him so agitated and wondered suddenly if he would be able to protect her. She'd never asked the question before, never had to. Just to think it upset her, she looked to her father for reinsurance, but all she saw was his frailty. She knew that he was just as frightened as she was. The realization made her stomach ache with tension. Lungwort caught her looking at him. Flag, he cried, moving forward. Poppy managed to lever the flag up just as she stepped off the bridge. The moment she did, the air was rent with yet another of Mr. Okax's cries. Woohoo! Woohoo! There he is, Lungwort exclaimed. Poppy looked up. As the lightning flashed and thunder rumbled, Mr. Okax's dead oak seemed to leap toward them. Against the darkness of Dimwood, she saw that the owl's branch reached out like a claw. As for Mr. Okax, his head feathers were erect making him look like a devil. Don't give way, Poppy said fiercely to herself, even as she trembled. Don't give way. 
And here is the picture of Mr. Oak, Oakax sitting atop a tree limb on the old dead oak tree. And I bet he's been watching them all along as they're coming towards him. Okay, time for a prediction. What do you think is going to happen when they meet him? Is Poppy going to be in trouble? Or is he going to be nice since they're asking permission? I don't know. He doesn't sound like a very nice guy to me, but we'll see. Chapter 6, Standing Before Mr. Oakax. The leaves of the oak trees around Mr. Oakax Oak shielded him from the rain, but Poppy and her father were being drenched. The owl's head, moreover, was pulled down between his wings, while his eyes, enormously wide and unblinking, gave Poppy the sensation that there was nothing she might do or even think of doing which he could or would not see. To Poppy, he seemed to be pure power and fury. Wanting to look away, she glanced at the base of Mr. Okak's tree. There laid what appeared to be a mound of pebbles. Gradually, a ghastly realization came over her. What she was seeing was a mound of Mr. Okak's upchucked pellets, the closely packed and undigested bits of fur and bone from his dinners. The vision made her blood turn cold. Only the sound of Mr. Okak's sneering voice jolted her back to alertness. What do you want, Lungwort? The owl demanded, his claws continually flexing on his perch. Lungwort, holding cap in hand like an empty bucket, said, May I wish you a very pleasant evening, Mr. Okax. It's not very pleasant, Mr. Okax returned with a snarl. No, well, you're absolutely right there, Mr. Okax, Lungwort replied, straining to sound jaunty, but... April showers, as the song goes, brings May flowers, and I, Mr. Okex, clacked his beak. Lungwort, it's summer. Did you come here to sing me idiot songs, or do you have something important to say? Well, in fact, I did bring. Hurry up. I have not eaten my dinner yet, and I'm hungry. Well, yes, of course, Longworth said. I understand perfectly. Longworth hastily put on his hat, not noticing until too late that it had filled with rain. Water cascaded over his head. With a nervous shake, he fumbled to unroll his speech paper before he could get it out. Mr. Okak's eyes grew bigger. Who's that? He demanded as he moved his head about to bring Poppy into better focus. Forgive me, Lungwort said. I've been rude. Uh, this is one of my dutiful daughters. Poppy, step forward. Look up. There's the good mouse, Mr. Okak's. May I introduce you to Poppy? Prodded by her father, she stepped forward gingerly. All she could see was Mr. Okak's eyes. She felt not just looked at, but attacked. Poppy, eh? He growled. I think we've already met. 
one of my sweetest lungwort offered. Mr. Okax ignored him. Instead, he said, what happened to your nose, girl? I scraped it. A close call, I'd say. Yes, sir. Little girl mice should be more careful. Yes, sir. Do you understand me? Poppy longed to run away. Longwort nudged her. Poppy, dear, if Mr. Ocas asked if you were understanding him. Yes, sir, I do, Poppy squeaked with a bob of her head. All right, then, Mr. Ocax said. Now be a good little girl and come stand under my tree while I talk to your father. Hating herself for acting so fearful, queasy at the thought of going close, closer to the mound of pellets, Poppy appealed to her father with a look. Lungwort, however, only nodded. Move it, Mr. Okak snapped. Averting her eyes from the pellets, Polly kept toward the tree, crept toward the tree, the flag dragging behind her. But when she reached the spot, she was unable to resist the fascination of the horrible mound. Once she looked, she caught sight of something that glittered. All right, Lungwort, Mr. Okex said. Let's hear what you have to say. Thank you, sir, thank you. Lungwort held out his piece of paper. Now the thimble full of water as well as the rain had drenched it. At the same time, he tried to read. Whereas Mr. Okax, great horned owl, ruler of the Dimwood Forest region, who, out of his kindness and wisdom, protects all members of the deer mice family. Whereas the said family of deer mice living in Gray House in return for Mr. Okak's protection, have agreed to ask his permission whenever they wish to move about. Whereas the deer mice family have grown so great in numbers, need a second place of habitation so as to maintain and enhance their lives with sufficient food. And, Lungwort paused to shake the paper, and what, Mr. Okax demanded. The paper is somewhat wet, Lungwort apologized. So is the style, Mr. Okax, uh, Okax observed. Go on. Lungwort cleared his throat and continued to read. Whereas Mr. Okax, protector of deer mice, is famous for his kindness, generosity, and compassion. There, stop. Yes, repeat that. What? That line about me, about kindness, generosity, and compassion. Right, I like it. That's well written. Yes, thank you, I wrote it. Whereas Mr. Okax, protector of deer mice, is famous for his kindness, generosity, and compassion. Therefore, said deer mice of Gray House humbly petition said Mr. Otax to go. Will you get to the point? Mr. Okax screeched in expiration. I'm sorry, exasperation, excuse me. I'm sorry, Lungwort said. The rain has washed away the rest of my writing. Then just dump it and say what you want, the owl boomed. We, we humbly request your permission, Lungwort finally said, to move. Move? Yes. Why? I said we are too many. We need more food. Where do you want to go? To Newhouse. 
first, Mr. Okax blinked. Next, he swiveled his head around, frowning first at Lungwort, then down at Poppy, then again at Lungwort. Finally, he said, You mean that new place up along the tar road beyond Newfield? Poppy thought she heard something new in Mr. Okak's voice. She tried to grasp it. Yes, sir. Mr. Okax hesitated. Well, er, have you been there? Now Poppy was sure it was uncertainty that she was hearing. Have you been there? Mr. Okax demanded shrilly. Well, the truth is, Lungwort said, my friend, Mr. Yes or No, the owl screamed. Well, no, not exactly, but my friend told me it would make an excellent source of food for half of my family and Lungwort, Mr. Okax interrupted. I forbid you to move to Newhouse. What? Lungwort grasped flapping the rain away from his face with a ball. The word had all but stuck in his throat. Permission denied, Lungwort? You cannot move to New House? But, but why, sir? Because I said no. But, but the Gray House area does not provide enough food. It's urgent that some of us move so we can survive and no new house. Now I've got a dinner to catch, so you'd better skedaddle. Unless, of course, you want to please me by leaving your daughter. Then, the owl chuckled, I might reconsider. But, Mr. Okax leaned forward. Hoo-hoo, he wailed in his loudest but lowest voice. The sound exploded over them. Poppy, clapping paws to ears, ran out from under the tree towards her father, who was still standing there stammering. But, but, come on, Papa, Poppy urged, trying to turn her father around. We'd better go. With difficulty, she turned him. Lungwort. Mr. Okax called suddenly. Lungwort whirled so fast the thimble, thimble fell off his head. Bowing, smiling, he began. You were just teasing, weren't you? Listen to me, Lungwort, Mr. Okax cried. I've two more things to say to you. First, pass the word among your friends that I've spotted a new porcupine around Dimwood. Porcupine? Lungwort echoed dumbly. A particularly vicious one. But don't worry, I'll protect you. Second, it's about your daughter there. If you want a reason for my refusal, ask her how she and I met before. Reason? She didn't ask permission to go to the hill. That's why you can't go to Newhouse. Yes, but beat it, Lungworth, now. Come on, Papa, we'd better leave. Lungworth glanced about for his thimble hat. It had rolled away. It was Poppy who retrieved it and put it on his head. Resigned, a sagging Lungworth allowed himself to be led away. Poppy glanced at her father. All traces of dignity were gone. The wetness that ran down his face was not rain, but tears. Poppy hardly tried to keep the flag aloft, and as they trudged home, she kept stealing looks into one of her paws. It was drenched, something she had pried from one of Mr. Okak's pellets she had 
ragweed's earring in her paw that she had gotten out of the pile of pellets. Okay, that's the end of chapter six. And I will see you on Monday. Bye.